Nicola, what do you think? Should we start and uh, we let the people come or you want to wait a little bit? Still? I, think, I think we are ready to start. We got 30 minutes, so let's Yeah, exactly. In. Okay. So, uh, and first, this is Nicolas Rocher on the upper left side on my screen. Yeah, Nicolas working with us. He's uh, our uh, left arm and uh, right arm collaborator. He lives in Barcelona, he's from France, but uh, he lives in Barcelona since uh, many years. And he worked with us on many projects, uh, aromatic projects in Barcelona, also in Japan, and especially at Tanaka 1789 Shafi project. He's the one who work. he's my right arm totally with Isabel, uh, both um, working on the blend, working on ideas, work, working on production, development, marketing, uh, everything. So, uh, and we just, exactly. wait. yeah, we're just waiting that uh, Japan's open its borders so Nicola can fly, live in Miyagi, uh, and we will join them a couple months a year. But uh, now we have to wait, unfortunately. Uh, but the most important is everybody uh, could be safe. So, it's a new rendezvous, a new meeting. We start today. This is our first real psychography uh, masterclass today. We've done two or three in the past, uh, but now we want to do a, a meeting each Monday, same time, 3.30 on CET uh, timing. So, that's mean 9, 9.30 a.m. in Montreal time and uh, 10.30 uh, p.m. in Japan uh, side. And uh, uh, same time it is in Singapore, I think, Josua. Yes, exactly. Just was from uh, Singapore. So, um, so we'll do that and it will all be 30 minutes, four or five minutes opening, just explaining what we will do, how we will do, and uh, then 20, 22 minutes of uh, masterclass, a real subject, and then five minutes closing, more or less question answer. The idea is to make it simple, short, but a lot of information, trying to bring our own vision uh, of uh, sake production, sake making, sake serving, matching and food. Many, many subjects will, will pass through exactly what we intend to do in our sake community that we call sake graphy on the web that you all discover if you are there today. So they, we're going we're gonna to post many, many, many other reports, many texts about sake. Uh, writing with Nicola and uh, some text with Isabel also, sometimes with AVT, with amazing sommelier from around the world that we will invite. There's already some uh, uh, writing for us right now. So we want to try, try to get this uh, diversity of vision, of uh, way of tasting, of way of using, of enjoying sake in our life. It's a community. That's what we want to do. So it will always be in English on a Monday. Maybe sometime we do in French, uh, we'll see. But on the Monday at, at 3.30, we'll uh, see a tea time will always be in English so that way we can get most of the people around the world, satisfy the people. Because Neon Guga de Kimasen, I don't speak Japanese, I don't speak Chinese, I don't speak uh, even Catalan. Even if I live in Barcelona, I understand Catalan, but uh, I don't speak much. Uh, uh, so I think it's much better in English. I uh, hope the people of Quebec, Montreal uh, understand that. I'm from Montreal, uh, raised in Montreal, speak French. That's why my English accent. And uh, so it's very important for me uh, to live in French and French when I was in Montreal, still here in, in Catalan. But communication in English, uh, we can touch everyone uh, mostly. So uh, each time there will be me or Nicola doing the, the core of the subject. Uh, today I will do the core of this first subject. Nicola is still there. Uh, if you have any question during the, the masterclass, you can chat uh, by writing. Nicola will answer. And if there's an amazing question, uh, you, will, uh, you will be winning the lottery. And Nicola will uh, cut me and we'll, we'll talk about the question. And we take a couple of minutes at the end if, if there's any question. It's very important to ask question. When you go to sleep without asking a question, you don't learn. Uh, and sometimes the most uh, stupid question that you think it's a stupid question is the best question. That's the way we learn. That's the way I've been learning. And I'm still asking questions. Uh, so that's the, the most important thing. So let's start today about the art of making sake. Huge subject. 
we will come back to that many, many times. Uh, now we just want to try to do a flying over uh, a very short summary of the art of making sake, just to put the foundation of uh, our project. We will do link our, the way we work at Tanaka 1789 Chartier project. This is at Tanaka Shuzo Brewery and Miyagi, but uh, mostly it's about how we do sake, how we intend to do that. Um, uh, so let's start right away. The most important thing uh, to know about Seki uh, is the rice, for sure. It's a rice product, but we need to know about the fermentation that the rice uh, doesn't have fermentation sugar, fermenting, and we call that fermentable sugar in English, huh? des sucres fermentés cibles en français. So fermentable sugar doesn't exist in rice. So we have to do uh, a transform, a prior transformation to arrive to that. And this prior transformation is done by Koji. So Koji is a bit the terroir of sake. We will do many, many uh, masterclass on Koji because it's amazing fungus. It's a fungus for the one who, who don't know about Koji. Koji is a fungus, it's quite important. That's the way to transform the starch of the rice to glucose, fermenta fermenta fermentable sugar to doing the fermentation. But this part of the Koji is so important. That will create some special aroma, special di direction, texture, umami or not, acidity or not. Many, many aspects that you can con not control, but trying to create to appear with the Koji time. So, in fact, Koji, just for, for you to know, Koji is used to do soya sauce, the transformation of soya beans. It's used also for miso. And today it's used a lot in the world modern cuisine. Uh, a guy, amazing chef like René Redzipi, I've, uh, I've done a lot of research on Koji. If you don't know the book Fermentation, go buy this book from René Redzipi, amazing book. And he talked not only on koji, he talked about fermentation on food, but fermentation is one, is one of the oldest process in the world industry, in the world uh, of living, of human living, fermentation of food. So, and koji is very interesting. So a lot of, uh, lot of inspiration from, from this guy. So now, so we know that rice don't have uh, fermentable sugar. So it's starch. We need to transfer this, to transform the sugar by koji and get the alcohol. So it's very similar as beer. You can say, uh, you say, oh yeah, very similar as beer, but yes and no at the same time. Why? Because the beer uh, is, the barley is malted to obtain to obtain different things and especially the sugar necessary to do the fermentation and then do the being the beer, but we cannot do uh, we cannot do malt like the malt principle with rice because we polish the rice before doing the sake. What's that mean? We polish. We're gonna put out the impurity of the rice of the outer shell at different ratio, different degree. Uh, so by doing that, you cannot, it's impossible to achieve, uh, um, uh, I would call that malt, uh, the way we malt with uh, barley. So this already put sake out of beer. It's very similar, but it's quite different at the same time. So, so maybe one question come to your mind. So how we get the alcohol? Koiji. Koiji is uh, with enzymatic transformation by this fungu fungus that is poor that we're going to put on the rice after we have washed the rice, we have sold the rice, we have cooked the rice. So for different reasons that I will go back on that just a little bit later, we're going to put the koji on the top and this will be help to do a tra enzymatic transformation to transform the starch to glucose and then we'll be able to do fermentation. But again, this is very important. This could decide your final product. So you need to do some decision there. What kind of koji we will use? Which, what kind of rice? And how much time you will, you will soak your rice? Uh, how long you will uh, cook your rice? At what temperature? It's very complex. At the end, when you understand, it's not that complex. Even sometimes less complex than wine production. But as for foreigner, I'm not Japanese, there's the language and there's a new technique. Well, I remember when I started uh, trying to know about that, that was in early 1990. 
long time ago. I'm an old man, uh, but very young and art and still young because I drink a lot of sake and wine also. So this is a very important step of the sake. At Tanaka, usually in the sake industry, uh, 90, 95, 96% of the sake produce are produced with, uh, with uh, yellow koji. There's, there's black koji, yellow koji, white koji, but mostly everybody using yellow koji. Why? Because it's fit totally, it's easier to do this transformation, enzymatic transformation. So the black and white koji normally are used more for shushu. Quite different. It's a distilled product. So it's completely different. It's very fashionable right now, shushu in Japan, and not only in Japan. Very interesting. There's some new product, very interesting. Used to be a little bit arch on the alcohol, uh, but now it's getting better. So, but we decide to use, uh, we use yellow koji for sure, like everybody. But we, we do some experimentation with white koji at Tanaka 1789 Ikshati project because this bring a faster saccharization, so transformation of starch to sugar. So, um, and then it's bring a bit of citric acid in the final project. There's no citric acid in sake. But if you use the white koji, you will get a little bit of citric acid like wine. So that's one of, not the only, one of the minor reasons why the Tanaka 1789 blends the Rosé one first product have a little bit of whiny profile. Let's say that. This is one of the reasons, not the major, because we cannot build on that. It's very complex to use white koji. And uh, there's a problem with the fermentation, the temperature. Uh, can, so it's not an easy way to go. But I find it very interesting. So I asked with Nicola, we asked the, the Toji, uh, Morika Wasan uh, is a young Toji and very talented Toji, very, uh, with a lot of sensibility, who work at uh, Tanaka Shuzoguri. And he opened his mind to us totally. And he, uh, so since three years, he accepts to change different paths to, to, to achieve our different sake that we will blend after. So, but we need to have, it's a bit like an artist who have a palette of color, and then he will, he will blend his color to achieve what he's looking for. It's very similar style, but we need good color. So when I went there, I, I asked the Toiji and the team if they can accept, because they know how to do sake, I'm not the Toiji, but they accept to change uh, 10 different paths to achieve what we were looking for. Then, uh, with the koji, uh, there's different method to use the koji. This one of method is, is well known everywhere in Japan. Again, I think it's like 90 or 95 percent of sake I done with the, what they call the tsuki assay method. So what's that mean? That means the koji will go right in the middle of the grain of the rice to get the, the transformation of the sugar and bring some aroma, acidity, umami, different things. Uh, but what we are looking for, we use another method. It's so assay. If you f look a bit on the web, you will f and the books, you will find that, that it's so assay method. So why? Because it's go inside, but it's go a lot around the shell. And this is amazing to get more texture, more umami, more acidity, more aromatic profile. And that's what I was looking for. I never made it three years ago. I asked the Toji, I, I know that from books and from tasting different sake, asking question, questions, so important to, to the Toji I met in my life and, and tasting with Nicolas who said, okay, we need to use this method, but this is very complex. It's a bit more complex than the Chuki as a method. So uh, we will be coming back on that, doing a masterclass only on those methods because it's quite interesting. Again, Koji for us is a bit like the terroir of sake. So it's quite interesting, uh, the impact on aroma, on texture, on, uh, on uh, profile. So then the rice sake. I'm sorry I'm talking fast, but uh, I, I try to capture everything in a, in a short period. So the rice, the first, the sake rice is quite different from the rice you, you own, you, you cook at home. It's a stronger rice, a smaller grain, uh, has more starch uh, and uh, has fewer protein. So it's quite different. We try to use rice with more protein at Tanaka. This is our choice. Huh? Everybody is looking for different things. Why? If there's more protein on the outer shell, especially, you will get more umami. And that's what I'm looking for. Acidity and umami, not only umami. I want acidity to be a sake, to be near of wine. So, uh, so the first step of production is choosing the rice. Then there's many 
quanti many, many, many variety of rice. Some uh, Yamada Nishiki, Miyama Nishiki, those are very praised rice. And some other different rice. We use at Tanaka uh, Miyama Nishiki and the Blend 001. And we use also uh, local rice, it's Kuro Noana. So Kuro Noana rice is a Miyagi rice that as the, this local, let's say, if, if I was uh, doing wine and burgundy, I don't want to use Riesling, I want to use Chardonnay. And I want to, you know, why? Because this is, has been proved for great, great variety for the terroir and burgundy for white wine. So, uh, and the, the Kuro Noana uh, variety is a variety for Miyagi who can do a very aromatic with good acidity uh, and good power uh, sake. Our powerful sake. So we decide, and over the year we will use more and more this variety uh, because local signature sustainability, helping the rice grower of the region, we will try to buy directly to them. This is very, very complex in Japan to buy direct to the producer. So we will try to change the path. So we, we intend to not polish more about sake. Polishing is just putting out the impurity. And, and, a, and a big mechanism, pull out the impurity of the grain. And, uh, but when you do that, you pull out also a certain level, uh, amino acid. Amino acid is future umami and the sake. You pull out some acids, some ester, ester aroma. So you pull out a lot of things. So for sure, you all maybe all have taste sake of 28% uh, polish. Wow, amazing. And they are. So, but my goal was and still doing sake uh, with Tanaka, with Nicola, with all the team, trying to achieve sake that is a little bit near of wine, more acidity, full body. So something like a Sauvignon Blanc from Sancerre or Pouilly Fumé on the acidity and aromatic point of view and a slight taste aroma and something more lacton, a round texture, full body, like a Chardonnay from Meursault or from Montraché. So that's what we're going. So to achieve that, we need less polish, 60 to 70 uh, percent polish rise. What's that mean? If I don't know, everybody is there today. If they know, you know about that. Uh, the polishing June Mai and uh, Ginjo need to be a minimum of 60, and by Ginjo it's 50 percent. What's that mean? That at 60 percent, that's, that's mean we've been putting out 40 percent of the grain, and to keep 60 uh, percent. So if it's 28%, that means we pull out 70% of the size of the grain and we kept only the, the art, so 28%. So our goal is to be around 60, 70, depending of uh, Miyamani Shiki or Kuro Noana grain and depending of the final result we want to have. We, we are not making just one psyche, we're making different psyche to, to then blend. So we work with that different, different uh, profile of, uh, of, uh, of rice and of polishing the rice. This has have a lot of impact as Koiji, as the polishing, and Koiji have an impact of how much is polished the rice. So it's getting complex even for the, for the brewer to, to understand about that, how to work. I talked a little bit before about uh, washing, soaking, cooking process. This is before going to the Koiji, before going to the fermentation need to wash after the, the rice being polished. Normally they buy the wine, uh, the wine, they buy the rice already polished and they will wash the rice to put the impurity. They will soak to get some water inside of the, of the grain before cooking, steam cooking the rice. Why? Again, to get more humidity depending uh, of how much humidity because how much koji you want to use and how long you want the fermentation to be, you know? So many aspects here are so important uh, uh, at that point. So um, uh, normally, the, the, all the brewery, maybe 99% of the brewery, will use 23% of the total rice for, to doing the sake as koji. So that means they will take 23% of the rice, they will transform with koji, and this will be used, add to the rice to do the moromi, to do the fermentation batch, to, to do the sake. We do 30% at Tanaka. Again, it's a choice. Why? To have more aromatic, 
more structure, more full body, more umami, more acidity. Always keeping the same line of production uh, to achieve that. The good thing, Tanaka Brewery, uh, Tanaka Shuzo was already using 30%. So we're on the same path because uh, uh, Morikawa san believe at building strong sake uh, that can age. So it's not, it's not a, a thing that people do a lot, make uh, sake for aging, but we should do that because some sake, not every sake, but some junmai could age for a long time. So we use 30% at, uh, at, uh, at, um, at Tanaka. After washing, soaking, cooking, koji step, then the rice is ready to do the fermentation. But before do that, we need to do a starting uh, a starter, a mother of sake, we'll see. Uh, it's the starter of fermentation we call the shubo or the moto, but uh, mostly it's called shubo. So this is uh, a mix of, uh, of, uh, of, the, of the rice transformed by the koiji uh, with a bit of rice, without koiji, with a bit of water, with a bit of yeast, and to start. So this will start the project. The, the, this will start at the same time uh, transforming the, with the enzyme, transforming the starch and sugar and glucose. And after a couple of hours, they will be already, and this, those are small batch, they will be already a fermentation process starting. So it's like a double transformation, double fermentation at the same time. The process of uh, transforming the starch and glucose is not a fermentation, it's a transformation process. But sometimes you will read books and they will say, ah, sometimes it's sky double fermentation. It is not. You want to ask a question, uh, Josua? No? Okay, I, you were, oh, I just uh, lose. Did I lose everyone? What happened? No. No, no, you're okay. Okay, We are listening to you, sorry. Um, all my other screen went over the, I'm sorry about that. So, okay. Uh, sorry, Francois, I wanted yeah. to ask you, is it common for um, breweries to use 30% of the koji instead? Uh, because no. I know most of it, they use only about 20, 20 22% around that. Yeah, exactly. But we, it's, it's very rare. I think it's two or three percent of Rabui in Japan use 30 percent, 29, 28 uh, percent. It's risky business. It's a lot of work, uh, especially when you do Kimoto uh, Yamai method. That's what we do. Those are method uh, used traditionally since, since over 400 years in Japan. It's craft method to transform the, 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 the starch. And, and, uh, and sugar and do the start of the fermentation. So this is very complex and very, a lot of work takes time, but by using 30% of that, the fermentation process will go faster and you get more aroma, more acidity, and a little bit more umami again. So, and as is what we are looking for. So uh, th this, what we talk now for the, for the one who don't know about that, the, the Shubo uh, using Kimoto and Yamai method is to, is to, um, to get the starch so to, by uh, lactic acid. Most of the Sakiburi use the Shokuju method. They will add lactic acid and, and the batch. This will help the, 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 the enzyme to work and slowly the yeast to be able to work because they don't like to work in a, in a less acidic method. You want to add something, Joshua? Or? Okay, great. So, so that's the way. Then the water. The water is very, what time is it? We have, okay, that's good. So the, the water is also very important, not, even, not only because of the content, it's 80% it's of the sake is water. It's like wine, 90% of wine is water. So, but in water is very important in the process. Sake is, is rice, yeast, koji, and water. That's it. Uh, that's the regulation of sake. That's the way we work. Hard water will create a faster fermentation. Uh, soft water will do a slower, slower fermentation. So again, it's a choice. If you have the choice of using water from your region or buying water from outside, because some buy water 
because they, they have hard water and their region, local, locality, but they buy uh, um, soft water because they want to have a slower fermentation. So it depends what you're looking for. We work with uh, hard water and Miyagi. Uh, this hard water is amazing for Junmai Sake. That's why Junmai Sake is the flagship of uh, Tanaka Shuzo. And also we do Junmai Sake, not only uh, the Blend 001 at Tanaka uh, 1789, it's a Junmai, hard water, potassium, magnesium, phosphoric acid. Uh, very interesting to, at the end, having a faster uh, fermentation. That's what we are looking for because faster fermentation equal a lot of aroma, more acidity, more umami. Slow fermentation, a little less aromatic. Uh, uh, no, uh, more aromatic, but less acidity, less umami, less texture. So, so, so you see how the impact of water is very important in the sake making. And at the end, I will, I will finish with that with the yeast. Uh, and yeast is like koji it's kind of terroir of sake because uh, it's funny in wine business, we don't want to talk about yeast. It's like, no, we need natural yeast and uh, yeast is, is very, uh, very uh, black subject in the wine industry. And sake is the subject. It's very important, the yeast. Uh, there's many, many different yeasts has been created, some by amazing uh, sake brewery like Dasai, Afkraik, and uh, 50 years ago, uh, yeast number six, and so there's many, many yeasts. We work with number seven, number nine, and number 14 at Tanaka, uh, but mostly number seven and number six, and also with the Miyagi B3 yeast. That's the name of the yeast. It's a local yeast, yeast of Miyagi. And why we work a lot with this year, there's two reasons. One, local signature. Uh, it's, a, a, it's a terroir effect signature. Second, most important, a lot of aroma, acidity, and texture. And that's what I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for. So that's uh, most most important thing about the art of making sake. Then the sake is ready, is in the tank now finish the 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 toji have to decide he will add alcohol or no he will press or he will press uh our press slow press what kind of press he will use how he will do the filtration he will not filtrate or uh, a little bit or he will filtrate a lot uh there's no filtrations at all like nigori uh -huh. so there's many many ways. then pasteurization we will do uh, maybe two masterclass on pasteurization. This is a very important subject. Uh, uh, Tanaka, we do, uh, Tanaka 79, we do namazume. That means one pasteurization before going and tank. So that's mean 30 minutes. Before going and tank, uh, uh, pasteurization once. Why? Because I don't want to have uh, aromatic deviation in the tank. And I want to be sure that the sake will travel well. If I do no pasteurization, it will be nama. Totally, like a natural sake, let's say that. But it won't travel well. So I, I don't want to have problem of traveling. We, we will be around the world uh, over the next months. So I prefer to do that even on a point of view of tasting. I prefer Namazume, uh, one, one pasteurization. So, um, so, and then some will add water to dilute, to bring back the alcohol. No, we don't do that. But there's many, and this doesn't change on the quality. Having what, adding water in the sake doesn't affect the quality. I have tastes of sake, they were 17% alcohol. They add water, they were amazing. I have tastes sake at 17 without adding water. We're not good, we feel the alcohol. So you need to take separately each process, taste, do your own uh, advice. You don't mind about that, it's very important. Books is one thing, but tasting, experience, asking questions is the most, most important thing. So uh, I know we were supposed to be 30 minutes. We are 30 minutes now. Uh, we'll take time for questions and, uh, and then we'll meet you uh, after that next week on the 21, same time for talk about sake classification, the complex legislation of sake. There's the official one, uh, classification about Junmai and polishing and everything, but there's an unofficial one also. So, could, could, a lot of things to, to say and try to capture that. Nicola knows well about uh, sake classification, so we'll be talking about that.
So, is there any question that want, people want to ask question live now? Uh, may I ask you, is Tanaka X, uh, is it a gang show? Since it's a, um, the alcohol is about 16, today we just tasted one. Today, exactly. We had a good opportunity to taste Tanaka X today. Exactly, it's a gang show. Singapore. Yeah. It's a gang show. Eh? Say, our goal is to get uh, low on alcohol. I didn't talk about alcohol today because we need to, to find uh, the, the subject. We find the subject for 30 minutes. But uh, we need also, uh, we, we try to get the final product with lower alcohol as we can without dilution uh, of water. And this is not an easy path to go. Uh, but at the end, I remember, I will, I will always remember that after in the 90s, late 90s, a petit sirah from uh, California who was 17.5 degree of alcohol. This is near a port, you know? This is like a, a port, a vintage port. But that was so amazing. There was a well-balanced aroma on the nose, mouth, tannin, food, uh, acidity. Everything was at the right place. We didn't feel much the alcohol. I felt the alcohol the day after, <laughs> but not during my tasting. So, uh, so, and this was amazing. And this showed me, again, I had many times with Zenon Brech from Alsace, same thing. A lot of sweetness and the and the wine, white wine, alcohol. But when you achieve the balance, all the elements, you don't feel it. And I, I think sensually we achieved that with the with the first blend 01 2018. Uh, we, we don't feel the alcohol much. And I'm very proud of that. And we've been working out even in 2019. We are working on the blend. Those are our sample directly we received from Japan because I cannot travel to Japan now because of Japan is cold. So they ship me a sample here and we blend and we talk on the phone and we try to set. And even now it's a little bit less alcohol, the fruitiness, the, everything is there. So yes, yes, to answer your question. Thank you. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you. Any, any question, any other question? Okay, so uh, I hope to see you all uh, next week and to see more and more people. We are building a new community uh, of sake. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll try to get more and more information and try to be more, more. Today was difficult to do because talking about the art of, uh, of uh, making sake and 22, 25 minutes, it's a bit crazy. But now then we'll go deeper in each subject and talk only about Koji on 203 masterclass, talk only on alcohol, talk only on, uh, on, uh, on the yeast. So it will be more interesting with example tasting at the same time, show you example of the impact of uh, working with Koji, different years, different rice, different polishing ratio. So this that will be a good way to learn more about sake. You have any question, you can contact us by the website. Uh, we receive all the answer uh, from the, the, the web mess. So we'll be uh, for you always av available and uh, hope to see you next week. And uh, arigato gozaimasu. Thank you so much.